El, today is a celebration. It is Pi Day. What's Pi? Delicious. Thanks for asking. It is also 3.14159265353897. Pi goes to like infinity. You're not about to read that number. Nine, three, two, three, eight, four, And folks six, say that he doesn't know good TV. Roll the Two, intro. six. Pi. Two, six, four, three. Okay. Pi is very triggering right now for some of our brothers and sisters that are watching the L. Duncan Show. Welcome to it with Gary Streisky. Ramadan Mubarak, some of our Muslim brothers and sisters. I know oh, that I'm married to a Muslim man yeah. who, by the way, in the interest of doing what's right for the show, I forced him to make a delicious treat whilst fasting because I'm an evil of a wife. Mm-hmm. Um, but anything There are laws against under- cruel and unusual punishment, L, and I'm just saying you've sort of implicated yourself in that regard. It's his favorite food. Oh. No food or water the whole day from 7 a.m. until 7 p.m. And I'm literally in the kitchen like, but do it for the show. Do it for the show. And they will make their debut, this aforementioned incredible food that I forced my poor fasting husband to make in just a little bit when we offer a little advice to Russell Wilson and Kirk Cousins. We've got some summer reading assignments yes. on the way. But, Gare Bear, as we get ready for just another fantastic week of sports. Come on. We're finally sports at the conclusion. Talk. Yes. Yeah, conjecture. All of that. We work in Sports Center, which means huh? that for the last week we've been going seven days till free agency, five days till NFL free agency, four days to NFL free agency. Then, of course, because the NFL is wacko, we've got a legal tampering period where like deals can be talked about, but they can't be ratified. Then, of course, we have the actual culmination of mm-hmm. NFL free agency. Mm-hmm. It's just like it's just a it's a total mushroom trip. But we've arrived. Wait, what? I've never experienced one of those, but I'm glad that, um, you know how there's no such thing as like a stupid question, but sure. everybody sort of is ashamed to ask the stupid question. Mm-hmm. We are fortunate enough to work with one Ryan Smith, who moonlights as an actual lawyer yeah. as well as a Sports Center anchor. So at the end of one of the show, well, it was the end of Sports Center Monday, David Lloyd was like, okay, Mr. Lawyer, so what is legal tampering? Because that's like an oxymoron, right? Correct. And that's basically how Ryan Smith described it. So did I walk away from the description knowing what legal tampering actually meant? Sure didn't, but but I but I think it's okay. <laughs> but it's all, I think it's okay. It's all good. And because the official NFL free agency started on Wednesday, like yeah. we're good to go. We're good now, yeah. We, everything's been signed and ratified. Deals are still coming in, but we figured that we would give some superlatives yes. to some of the major deals that we saw happen during NFL free agency. Huh? And I'm going to start with... Most likely to pick up the next check, Cha-ching, Chris Jones. This honestly could have been most likely to have some cousins he didn't know about That's because Chris Jones just got paid. Five-year deal, $158.75 million to stay with the Chiefs, where, of course, he has become a generational talent. Isn't it so interesting, the, the dynamic that we've seen just one season ago, and it just hammers home the fact that the NFL – is nothing but a business because the Chiefs are like, we are going to give you a one-year deal as a franchise player, and yeah, you can come to these games and not suit up and sit in the suite with your agents and your representation, but we are standing steadfast with this one-year deal that you're going to prove it because you're not in your renegotiation window. And then, of course, they made amends and they made the deal happen, and then, boom, Super Bowl, here's 150 M's. Yeah, Like, that's crazy. Last year, they were like, no, you're not worth that. But now because we can negotiate with you, yes, you are. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That. That's is, crazy. Well, it's oh, it always like speaks to anytime there is a relationship with a, an employee and employer that involves yeah. contracts, it's just the definition of just like a, such a horrible, abusive relationship because mm-hmm. you spend those years like, we love you. It's great. I love working here. We love that you work <laughs> here. It's amazing. And then when that contract comes up, it's like... I mean, you ain't really all that. Though, yeah, but you like, know what I'm for real, you think you're not replaceable? You don't <laughs> think we can just go to the draft? You don't think there are thousands of people sending in their resumes for Sports Center, Gary? What? <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of a little bit too real because your boy's coming up yeah, on Yeah, I see. Exactly. June. Yeah, I feel like we touched a nerve. So before I get into trouble, what about this next one here? Right. Um, this is the player who is <clears throat> most likely to help someone hit a DEI quota. That player is. 
Hunter Renfro. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> they got that in the end. I was like, where are we going with this, game? <laughs> they got that something about the Rooney Rule, but uh, with players, listen, released by the Raiders after a pretty solid five seasons in Las Vegas. And, of course, the national champion at Clemson. He was a do-it-all receiver, and nobody really expected – well, maybe some people did expected much of Hunter Renfro, but he had a five season staying power and he was good enough to be a pro bowler in 2021. Didn't have any touchdowns this past season, but Hunter Renfro, he can check a box for one of these NFL franchises. Just saying, somebody agrees with me to my left. Yeah, we can definitely hear the McCurdy. Yeah, no, we're, we can hear the McCurdy. That's happening right now. Someone's talking very loudly in the studio. They're happy, though. They're, yeah, they're, they're, that's they're, good. They're if you guys can't hear it in the studio, I guess it doesn't really matter. If you Perfect. can hear it in the control room. We'll it's just, just beaming straight into my left ear. I think they're giving through. us compliments. Yeah, that'll just power through. All right. Most likely to get memed also turned out. Ooh. Kirk Cousins. Huh? Okay. To Atlanta, four-year, $180 million deal, $100 million of it guaranteed. Um, there he is right there. Come on! He's wearing chains. Pretty soon he'll be hanging out with Quavo. Kirko chains. Kirko chains. Kirk Frost, if you will. Um, we actually have, I've got a homework assignment for Kirk Cousins coming up in just a bit where I'll yes. really tell him how he can ingratiate himself to the city of Atlanta. Yes. He needs to hit the ground running with some summer reading that is on the way. What's your next I'm very appellative? excited because you keep it on Ready. the pulse of Atlanta. Uh, this player is one who will be most likely getting a geography lesson. That player is Brian Burns. After being traded from Carolina to New York and coming to a quick realization that we play in New Jersey? <laughs> what? This dude is from the South. He's from Florida. And then he got drafted by the Panthers. And, of course, they've played up there before. But Burns, man, he going from that tax-friendly North Carolina to New York, where they're going to come after that $150 million. Just, just letting you know, man. <laughs> they're coming after it. <laughs> Give me some. I want some of that. Oh, how about this one? Most likely to Google the meaning of all in. And that Ooh. would be... Cowboys fans Yikes. because Jerry Jones said I'm all in I I don't I'm pretty sure you weren't on this sports center I got to give some love to one of the sports centers this week the 2 p.m. sports center uh -huh. you know anything petty 100% touches my heart correct and they did a whole big giant treatment and it said across this giant board it said it said Cowboys NFL free agency moves and it was just empty <laughs> That's good. It's a blank list. It was so good. That's but this, good. this is Jerry's quote, right, when he talked about his off-season plans a couple months ago. It will be going all in on different people than you've done There's in the, the past. There's the Jerry Jones. We'll be going all in. We've seen some things out, some of the players that we want to be all in on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All in apparently means don't do a damn thing. Here's a tweet. If the Cowboys don't sign a free agent in the next 60 minutes, I'm taking crystal meth. That feels aggressive. And also feels like it's only going to punish you, Connor Livesay. Um, well, I feel like, and I've heard that if you take it, you don't feel anything at all. Okay. <laughs> I can't speak from experience or whatnot, but it seems a bit aggressive. The best part, the best part that happened about uh, the Cowboys not making any moves was the Skip Bayless tweet. Yeah. That was, you know, like <laughs> really, all in really, my ass. Really underscoring why commas are important. Very you know, important. Um, he tweeted all in, comma, mm -hmm. my ass. Had he have left that comma out? Well, you know what's People next. People would have been like, I knew it. <laughs> I knew it. We're going Russell Wilson next. Sure. Most likely to use a bad pun. Yeah. I gave that one away. Yeah. That was bad. Most likely to not understand the directions. Gary Strysky. Most time. likely to use a bad pun. Russell Wilson going from Denver to Pittsburgh, a cult-like city, which I love and I think is incredibly underrated, a bunch of yins, which I thought was derogatory until a, a friend from Pittsburgh was like, no, it's actually a term of endearment. Yeah, it's like a John yeah. right in Philly. Um, he has yet to do his press conference. Correct. Can I like, can I like cosplay as Russell Wilson in Jeez, this press gosh, conference, we, especially it. with the bad pun thing? Okay. Hey, everybody. <laughs> God. You're so I haven't really worked on my Russell Wilson voice. Yeah, no, no, for sure. Hey, everybody. Forget Jeremy. It's time for Yin Sanity. I know it's been tough seeing a pitfall, but I plan to be here. This isn't a pit stop for me. I feel complete. I am pitiful. That's crazy because I can close my eyes and just picture him. <laughs> going bar for bar, line for line, word for word, beat for beat 
with that. And then somewhere toss in, because in Pennsylvania, there's this battle between Sheets and Wawa, and I think Pittsburgh is a Sheets city. Oh. So something about, hey, you're getting you're getting Russ in the streets, yeah. but a freak in these sheets or so, oh, something along I those lines. I could see that, he's, yeah. He's doing something. Yeah, kick, Russell Wilson is with the sheets. We're going to kick the sheets out of those okay. AFC North divisional rivals. Watch out, Baltimore. Mm. Yeah, um, so, of course, Russell Wilson goes to – this is a great deal for the Steelers because Fantastic. the Broncos are paying for a large portion of the salary. million of this salary that the Broncos are just writing a check for. Yeah, the Steelers just are giving Russell Wilson the veteran minimum. they got minimum. Walmart money, so it's all good. They're they fine. Got, they, they're, they're doing they're all right. <laughs> they're doing all right. Um, but so, basically, he's going to contend with Kenny Pickett for the starting role. But here's where I think – we can really step in and help. Thank you. Okay. Yes. Um, we want to provide not only Russell Wilson, but Kirk Cousins, two veteran quarterbacks in the league who are now starting over at their respective new franchises. We want to just give them a little advice. Yes. As you know in school, mm -hmm. one of the worst things that a teacher can say to you on the last day of school is, and don't forget your summer reading because we're going to hit the ground running on day one, so you better read it. Uh, Miss Johnson, that's the first thing I'm going to do is forget my summer reading. Okay, we'll see you in three months. You old windbag. <laughs> All right, I'm moving on to the fourth grade. You can't tell me what to do. You were calling your teachers windbags in the third grade? That was grade? a lived experience. <laughs> yeah. It's like, uh, hey, don't forget your summer reading. Gary, for you, it's a coloring book. <laughs> Damn it. I but always... I'm in the 10th grade. I know, I know. I'm going to go to college next year, I think. Why are you doing this to me? All right, so anyway. we need Russell Wilson to brush up on some of his yes. Pittsburgh knowledge. Okay. I figured let's reach out to, I don't really know anybody from Pittsburgh, but I do know someone who played for the Steelers for many, many years. Friend of the program. Friend of the program, won a Super Bowl there, yep. spent some time there. And so we figured we would dial up. Ben right Roethlisberger. Our, no. Oh, okay. Oh, a friend of the Avoid program. All My bathrooms. bad. My bad. Um, I would say. <laughs> Damn. I would say um, Ryan Clark is that person who offers Russell Wilson a little bit of advice on some of the things he can be reading up on so he can really, really, really prepare himself for that Pittsburgh move. Oh, that's good. I thought this would be short, but here are some books I think that Russell Wilson needs to read in order to survive in Pittsburgh. He needs to learn about Parodies and understand why anybody would put that on a sandwich yeah. or a pizza. Also, Brush up on your museums, Andy Warhol, Roberto Clemente, or pretty much any other kind of museum that you can think of. But in the end, it's about reading books like Palomalu, reading books like Their Life's Work, because Pittsburgh is all about winning championships. He's not going to need to know if it's lemon pepper wet or lemon pepper dry, like Kirk Cousins, because ain't nobody frying them, and sure as hell, ain't nobody dancing while you eat them. So all I can say, brother, is enjoy your time in Pittsburgh and maybe brush up on what kind of jacket to wear. Oh. Down coat, yeah. trench coat, yep. fur coat. Yep. You'll need them all. I know you can afford them. Denver's still paying that money. All right. He got them all, Thank too. You. you had to get the little jab in on the end. There you go. That's Any a, other advice okay. that you would offer Russell Wilson for Pittsburgh? Oh, I'm surprised to find out that there are entire um, works of literature that just outline the, the, the pierogi. OK, just okay. books about pierogi. So that's that's interesting to me. I might I might look into that now while he's going for the Pittsburgh centric approach, because, of course, RC is familiar with the great city of mm -hmm. Pittsburgh, Steeltown, USA. I'm going to go for something more intrinsic for Russell Wilson, because I think he's trying to shed some of the misnomers and maybe assumptions about he as a person and a character. So one, how to make friends and influence people by Dale Carnegie. All right. He's going to go into an unknowing situation. What about how to develop self-confidence and influence people? You don't need to be reading that book. He also needs to read Shut Up and Listen by Tillman Fertitta, okay? Just sometimes shut up. Just You don't got to talk. Just listen to the teammates. And last but certainly not least, Talking to Strangers by Malcolm Gladwell. Because Lord knows that we, and especially he, don't know anybody in that Steelers locker room that's not named Watt or Pickens. Sure. All right, so he's going to have to learn how to talk to some strangers mm -hmm. in Pittsburgh. And that's my summer reading. It kind of feels like you just advocated for Russell Wilson to spend some extensive time in therapy. But yes, he could also just read all those self-help books. I've also read all those books, and they're very good. Oh. Right? They'll teach you some good stuff. And that's it. 
Okay. Um, so there you go, Russell Wilson. That's yeah. what we think you should brush. Let's move on to Kirk Cousins because oh. Russell Wilson, like he's one of those chameleon guys. I feel like he can kind of – Kirk Cousins is very much a fish out of water in Atlanta. Yes. He just is. I understand his wife is – they keep saying she's from there. She is not. She's from Gwinnett, which is not the same thing as okay. from Atlanta. You very quickly had one suggestion for Kirk Cousins for Atlanta. David Goggins. While you do that, I'm getting something. Gotcha. David Goggins can't hurt me, and this is why. All right, Kirko, Atlanta needs you. You need you, and you simply cannot get hurt. Okay, your pain is their pain. L, you bring her damn near to tears, the Falcons did this season. So you need to learn how to play through whatever might ail you this season. Now I defer the rest to L, Atlanta's very own. I know yes. nothing about this city that L can't talk about. I've been waiting for this. You know, everybody wanted Justin Fields to go back home, but I wouldn't have been able to share any of this with him because he Correct. certainly understands. So we're going to start with the most important thing that you need to know, Kirk Cousins, all right? Now these, my friend, are what we call a lemon pepper wing, all right? You can take a look at that right there. See that? Now, well, not so to be confused I, with hold lemon on. pepper wet. Is wet. your mouth watering? Because really you went like I'm this. Like, I want to eat it so bad. Not to be confused huh? with lemon pepper wet, all right? Lemon pepper wings are the main protein and food source for all Atlantans. In fact, most of our nutrition comes from lemon pepper wings, okay. but you will ruin your street head and cachet if you confuse lemon pepper with lemon pepper wet. And obviously, neither one of those things are hot lemon pepper wet, which is a whole other category. I'll let you enjoy these wings you got while I get through the rest of them. There is they're no, all drums. They're all drums. There oh, you go. You don't want okay. that one? No, I'm gonna I have to talk. So Okay, I'm you want you me to okay, that. so you already you can take that, and I'll just get a little. Oh my God, they're so good. Oh, they're just fantastic. Oh, okay. Also, Kirk Cousins, you need to read up and brush up on all of your peach trees, all right? There's at least 30 peach tree identifiers, and you need to know that Peach Tree Street is not the same as Peach Tree Road. In fact, if you ever feel really lonely and you just want a taste of Minnesota, if you know what I mean, you can go to Peach Tree City, okay? It is your sanctuary, and I will leave it there. Speaking of which, Atlanta's straw that stirs the drink, okay, Gary, mm. are adult entertainment establishments. Mm. Kirk Cousins, do not be offended if a charity event or a serious business meeting is taking place in the hollowed halls of Magic City. All right. This is a which is not a magic store. It is not a magic store, okay. but magic happens there every <laughs> single night. This is as normal as people in your old home sitting on a frozen lake and drilling a hole in the ice because they just got to get this angler off, even though it's a blizzard. Now, Kirk Cousins, people are going to tell you, you should go to the varsity, where the slogan is, what'll you have, what'll you have? But if you go to the varsity, all you're going to have is a mountain of regrets and the bubble guts. Study up on Freak Nick, Kirk Cousins. It no longer exists, but honestly, if we don't learn from our past, then we are destined to repeat it, right? Just read about it and enjoy. But don't read about it at Falcons headquarters and definitely don't read about it in front of your wife. And lastly, Kirk Cousins, your summer reading list as you make your transition to Atlanta, I want you to remember that even though you're technically playing as an Atlanta Falcon, they really mean the Flowery Branch Falcons who travel an hour south eight times an entire fall in order to play in Atlanta. You will only see the city from your car service. It's actually more accurate to say that you play for the Clemson Tigers because in terms of proximity, you're closer there than you are to Atlanta. And that's it. Not a magic store. <laughs> but magic happens. I got Enjoying questions. those wings? Very good. Yeah. Oh, good. I'm telling you, it's the number one main supply and food source. If you tapped my veins right now, lemon pepper would come out. I won't do that. Okay, I'm going to let you Hands enjoy that. When we come back on the L. Duncan Show, we'll get into some crazy that people said this week. I would love a Coke. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people wouldn't admit this, but me and Gary's self-esteem is completely contingent on you guys watching, listening, our show, rating it really, really well, and then telling someone about it. Every Monday and Thursday, wherever you get your podcasts, or also on YouTube, and then of course on Fridays, 2 to 3 p.m. Eastern, on ESPN2. You know that um, adage, like, kids say the darndest thing. That's right. Well, so do athletes. Whole entire show about it. So do athletes. In fact, so much so, we're going to judge them. We're going to, ooh, lights going off. Oh, We're damn. taking them to court. I love this. I don't even know if we're allowed to use this. When did you get your law degree? You see that? I don't get a law degree. 
Sure. I got my law degree in this. Oh, look at this. They're surprising us with graphics. And, <laughs> you know, it's a lot of brown for me, but that's okay. fine. Wood paneling is lit. Hound the gavel. <laughs> Boom. All right, Cam Newton. Yeah. While it's talking about Kirk Cousins. Yes. There's not a whole lot that Cam Newton says that's incredibly relatable to me, relatable to me but this is his response to Kirk Cousins getting, what, a $100 million deal from Atlanta. Damn! Who is your agent? It's extremely alarming. He only had one playoff win. It in is extremely years. alarming. Can I tell you something more alarming? Yes. Can I just don't even think about the Falcons money? Okay. Can I tell you how much Kirk Cousins has had in career earnings? This is before the 100 million that he's that he just signed. This is for during his since 2012 when he came in the league yes. and was working with the with the then Redskins. Yeah. You ready? Yes. Kirk Cousins in 12 years has made $231 million. Hey, it's a good living if you can make it. 231. You remember he was franchise tagged yeah. a couple of times, yeah. like for a quick hundred milli. And the beautiful thing about that is everything in Minnesota was fully guaranteed. Yeah. And then that's what he was requiring of this next deal. Uh -huh. So the Falcons is just writing him a check. Hey, don't worry. Home Depot's good for you. You right. know what I'm saying? Mr. Blank, he's got it like that. Go blow that whole thing at Magic City, Kirk Cousins. He, and he could. Just a couple trash bags going Pac-Man Jones style. I don't think that it's crazy for us to be like, oh, my gosh. He's 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 made so much money because he is he has been the absolute benefactor of right place, right, right time. time when it relates to quarterbacks and franchises absolutely needing to pay somebody. And here sure. comes Kirk Cousins. This Redskins, he was like, he's not supposed to be this good. And then of the, hey, how do you like that game? They paid him. Boom. And then Minnesota needed a quarterback. Bang. He got a playoff win. He got the guaranteed money. Now Atlanta needs a quarterback. Right place, right time. He's the epitome of the guy that, like, is striking out with all the girls during the club. And then huh? at the very end of the night, like, the lights are coming on. And she's like, well, I wanted to go home with someone. I guess you'll do. Yes. And there's been three women like that as it relates to <laughs> franchises for Kirk Cousins. All right. More quotes. From this week, this is a good one. C.J. Gardner Johnson huh? said he hated Philly, okay? His least favorite thing about Philly are the people. They are obnoxious. He can't stand those mother <laughs> Guess where he's playing now? <laughs> Philly, stand up! <laughs> okay, here's the thing, though. He thinks that he's, like, besmirching the good people of Philly. They love it. This is only going to make them love you more. Yeah. All right, because the people of Philly would be like, damn right we're a bunch of <laughs> Damn right nobody likes us. And because you realize that, CJ, we love you for that. You are one of us, unbeknownst to you. This are we is supposed to, like, say guilty or not guilty I don't or know. something? Guilty of having a fantastic quote. Yes, thank you. Um, this is the epitome of Giannis talking about Patrick Beverly this week and being like, yes. when he doesn't play for you, he's Fact. But when he's for you, he's your Sounded like a Steven Seagal villain again. L, yeah. there you go. I told you my Giannis is not good. And finally, in the most relatable of fan fury, uh -huh. Luke Combs, noted country superstar, is a Panthers fan and quoted, what are we doing? <laughs> no first round pick for McCaffrey a few yep. years back. Now none for Burns. Are we just firebombing the whole team or what? I usually don't comment on these kinds of things, but it's just becoming slow torture at this point. And I don't know Luke Combs like has just Luke Combs has has gained more followers and more fans than he already has. Man, this guy, this guy spits the truth, and that's why long neck, ice cold beers never broke my heart. He wrote that song. It wasn't because of a of a love gone wrong or you know a a, a, a lady friend turning her back on him. Th he wrote that song about the Carolina Panthers. Yeah. L, they yeah. keep messing up. Yeah, I feel like he told us, like, foreshadowed this when he remade Fast Car, right? I want a ticket to anywhere. Yes. Except for the Panthers. Get me the hell out of here. I'm done with you, Charlotte. Gosh, that franchise is a dumpster fire. All right, so now that we have just been the judges, but our law degree judging now. some of these quotes, we're going to just go even bigger. When the L. Duncan show returns, we've had it with March and all its judginess, and we're about to turn the tables. How the tables have turned on March. That's right. It's an L. Duncan show style bracket that puts March front and center, and you'll see coming up. Oh, oh and we back. Good bubble. L. Duncan show is back. 
Of course, it is March. That sounds like kind of, I know. Kind of sounds like a wet fart. Yeah, I was gonna say it's it's giving. Like, that sounds like yeah. bubble guts, not bubble watch. <laughs> you know, <laughs> tell you that's what happens if you eat at the Varsity, yeah, Kirk Cousins. Somebody was at the Varsity. Bop, bop, bop. Rapid fire. Um, it's going. Somebody get that man some Pepto Bismol. We are just a few days away from Selection Sunday. Uh, by the way, make sure that you tune in on Sunday, 8 p.m. ESPN, where the women's exclusive Selection Show reveal will happen. I will host it. It will be great. But we're getting ready, and I just feel like March is all about, because of March Madness and because of the basketball, it's all about judging teams. I mean, there's a selection committee that just sits around and just judges these teams. Oh, how many wins? How good are your wins? How good are you? What do we think you're going to do? And I just sometimes I want to be like, you know what, March, you judgy bitch. I'm going to judge you back, March. I'm going to take you, March, and everything that you're known for, and we're going to judge you and put you on a bracket, all right? Love it. March and spring loaded. So this is our March bracketology. And we're going to start with our top seeds because that is always the least intriguing thing. Sure. All right. Here's my number one seeds for March. Okay. Spring break. Okay. It's lit, lo- mostly because I don't have to like rush out of the house and get my kids ready. I can ease into my morning. It's great. Okay. And St. Patty's Day, of course. Now, I don't, I don't engage in as much of the libations as I used to, okay. um, but always fun now that my kids are into it and they do Got the it. whole pinch you green thing. So, yeah, spring break, St. Patty's Day. It's lit. You're doing really well there, March. All right, those are some good. Those are some good top seeds. My my top seeds, and the reason they are top seeds is because, all right, you don't need vacation money to enjoy one of these. Okay, fair. I'm talking Shamrock Shake. Uh huh. Okay, and the post Easter candy sales. I specifically outlined the Reese's eggs, but I guess Cadbury will do. Even though I don't like Cadbury, Cadbury as much as I like Reese's, because the day after Easter, so April one this year, all right, those Reese's. Going to be half off at every single one of your stores and yeah. convenience stores. And everybody knows the price of Reese's candy has skyrocketed along with everything else. Everybody knows that. So treat yourself, get yourself some discount candy, and treat yourself with a shamrock shake. Can I, just one thing though, can you not bring all of your old candy that you don't want and just leave it at work? I get so tired of just seeing candy bowls all over work because people are just trying to goodwill away their candy. It's not, it's old Sorry, candy, they're bringing I don't ho- want it. They're bringing holiday. They, well, they always the no. They always sneak Halloween candy in there too. Like you end up seeing some bats on there. I'm like, absolutely not. This is literally <laughs> trash. From say your some candy names. Drawer. Say some names. Let's go to the outs. Did you okay. say Kevin to Gandhi? No. <laughs> Let's go to the outs. Okay. Totally out pollen. on pollen. Okay. Yep. Because what's the saying? Like April showers bring, bring May, May flowers. flowers. No, April showers bring hay fever. And a lot of Zyrtec in my life. So, Pollen, you suck. Also, the prom restaurant takeovers. I always find this to be really weird. I'm so disappointed in you. No, I mean, I know that you're like a fan of this, but I find it to be weird. Just I, and I trust me, I was that person too, you know, where you go to prom and you are still only 17, 18 years old, so you don't have prom money. Yeah. So, what a prom restaurant is to you is what a, let me throw my kids in the car, hair in a top knot and sweatpants. Mm -hmm. So I go to the Cheesecake Factory and I look over and there's like tiaras and tuxes. I'm like, oh my God, you know? So like, that's not a thing for me either. I hate it. Well, I never thought I'd see the day where you, all right, a lady, a beacon of fun and just joy Mm. and walking down South Beach, you know, back to front with your friend because somebody got a, bathing suit that was too small or whatever it was that you did you didn't and that now you're mad well you had to pee and then it didn't zip and blah 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 no i remember i remember the story and now you're mad at kids trying to live their best l duncan i'm not mad i just get mildly annoyed also because i'm like you could have gone like some place like a little nicer like it's prom. The whole point is you splurge all of your parents. Some you splurge on your parents' money. Like that's what you're supposed to do. Okay. It's prom. You shouldn't be at you know a Beefo Brady's for prom. Okay, whatever. Um, the pollen thing is a you problem, by the way. It's a it's a more than just a me problem. Pollen is a major deterrent to welcoming spring. Y'all better get some better immune systems because your boy, your boy gets through spring. Yeah, just fine. no, yeah. I wish I could go back in time and be born with no allergies. Um, <laughs> but Gary, I think where the most intriguing yes. part of March lies in some of the bubble things. Yes. 
that accompany March and the spring. And here are some of our bubble things. And we talk about the one at the top of the list talk right now. We are literally, of course, we do this show from Central Connecticut, Bristol. Um, we are currently in the middle of this right now. Yeah. Fake spring. Fake spring. Right outside these studios. It is 70, not a cloud Stunning. in the sky. Birds are chirping. The yeah. pr- rabbits are making love because they're like, it's that time again. Yeah. Well, they always make love. But anyway, it's fake spring. It's 70 degrees and it's perfect outside. Not a, not a, not a wisp of a breeze. And it's perfect. Yeah. Only for us to be duped, L, because this weekend it's gonna be cold and yeah. sleety and rainy. Mm-hmm. So while this is great to enjoy, we only get it's fleeting, but it's a tease. So I was just like about to say, we called it fake spring because I guess we couldn't put <laughs> on the graphic, but no, that's basically what it is. I don't don't think we can. We can do, we can, we can call it a forecast for play. For play forecast, okay. I think is more TV ap- apropos. Um, sure. Also, let's put that list back up because yes. I have a what question for you when it comes to spring fashion. Okay. Of course, it's very pastel We do have Easter in yeah. play here. Um, how do we feel about seersucker? Because this is seersucker season. Like this is, you've been waiting on your seersucker, get these seersucker outfits off. Mm. This is the time. And yeah. I just wonder how we feel mm-hmm. in general about this kind of linen, seersuckery, cottony, pastel goodness. Love it. But again, when it does get a touch gusty, it's a touch dangerous. Okay, I think it's a little bit dangerous. Seersucker is a little bit too sheer, okay, for me to risk it for the biscuit. Mm. But I feel like that's something that you should add into your repertoire in a climate-controlled studio that is Sports Center. Wait, does that mean that all the baseball uniforms are made of seersucker? That's right. That's right. Why is there such a delicate Why can I pattern see, on that? Can I oh, see wow. your print. Is that Vineyard Vines? I think that's a, I think that's a Vineyard Vines jersey. Yeah, it sure is. So I think we're out on fake spring, in on spring fashion. How do we feel about March memeness? I got to be honest. The only thing more annoying than it's going to be May to me is the Julius yeah. Caesar. What is, what is, I, what's wrong with you? Come up with something new. The, Play the hits. The Julius Caesar one that always pops up in March because this is the month he was killed. It's the Ides of March, right? It's like all about treachery. Oh, no, right? yeah, for sure. I knew, oh, you didn't know no. that's where that was from? No I, I, no, I for sure knew that. Where did you think all those Julius Caesar memes came from? I don't know. Ju- I've never seen a Julius Caesar They're meme. They're all over March when the Ides of March are upon us. You know what's after March? April fools and i feel like right now you're trying to play a joke on me i've never seen an ape i've never seen a julius caesar themed meme yeah, selection it does you guys are just gonna have to tell he's gonna have to take my word for it i only know the justin timberlake one it's gonna be may and it's good because no. it's funny and you play the hits yeah may the fourth be with you god may one. has a couple of them that's that a annoying. good one too um i think we're totally out on daylight savings time because that sucks especially when you have like a little kid you've been sleep training and then all of a sudden the time changes on you they don't understand and finally we're on the bubble about this one kate gate i gotta be real for me this whole kate winslet conspiracy crap winslet now not winslet oh i'm like damn there's another there's another kate in the news i can't keep up with the kates kate middleton i was totally out on the kate middleton like where is she really? Is she having a BBL? I'm like, the lady told you she's going to be gone for two months. She's been gone for two months. But, However, but once they photoshopped a rando picture of her with her kids, I am all the way back in. They are my first four in now. What the fuck are y'all doing? Yeah. Why are you photoshopping pictures? Yeah. Now, I don't believe that she's dead like some people are. But this whole affair thing, that could yeah. be something that I could be really interested in. It is funny, the memes that I have seen that, hey, as, after 1776, we weren't supposed to care about what's going on over there. And yeah, I also like the, you cannot change Kate Middleton in for a Hills Have Eyes type Kate Middleton. I think that is funny. Have I dug any deeper into the conspiracy than that? No, I haven't. But the Photoshop was, was oh, this is, the, this is the monarchy. This is the kingdom. This is the royal family. And they couldn't get a good Photoshop? Right. They couldn't have somebody cook up some edits. Bruh, you That's don't have crazy. AI? Just ask ChatGPT to do it. That's crazy. It's but well, for real, like, are people worried that she's like dead or like the royal family is trying to keep it hush hush because Prince stepped out? Like, is that legit what we're talking about? Everybody was having a really fun time with it, saying she was getting a Brazilian butt but lift. But now, knowing, knowing that, but now, then they photoshopped a picture of her. Now people are really like, "What is going on?" And there's something super sketch. Certainly, we'll have to keep an eye on it, and we'll bring you all of those details on the L. Duncan Show as soon as we find out. Especially if it's a BBL, we'll have picks. I the hope. Proof will be in the pudding. When we return, we'll and close out this train wreck with what you missed, and also some receipts. Take offense to that. 
Welcome back to the L. Duncan Show. Remember, new episodes post every Monday and Thursday wherever you get your podcast. We're not picky. And also Listen. Friday. Friday, of course, on ESPN2, 2 to 3 p.m. Eastern. You can see us on your TV screen and on YouTube as Jerry well. Jerry Jones again. Yeah, We're turning into the NFL. You know, it's Monday and then it's Thursday. And then, you know what, let's let's do a game Friday. Yeah, put a little Friday. Soon enough, too. Tuesday and Wednesday looking a little lonely. And then all of a sudden we got... Billionaire media rights? 18-game schedule. Yeah. Let's do it. You know, maybe you were sleuthing trying to figure out what's happening with Kate Middleton. Nope. <laughs> Everybody but Gary. And maybe you missed some things. Yes. We got your back here on the L Duncan. Come on. We aggregated all of the biggest things that you might have missed while you were lifing, starting yep. with SGA, Shea Gildas Alexander on Tuesday. So take a look here, Gary. He fouls Andrew Nembhard from the Pacers. Okay. When they were already down 10 with just 20 seconds left. And why did he do that? So that he would have a shot at getting 30 points, which he did, Don't which would it. allow him to pass KD for the all-time Thunder franchise record of 30-point games in a season. Don't hate it. Love it. No? SGA is the man. All right? He knows that he is an MVP front runner. Okay? It's going to go to the Joker. And I love it. All right? He's trying to erase and rewrite the history books in Oklahoma City, and I love it. But there wasn't, like, the last game of the season. I mean, he could have just done it, like, two days later when they played again. That's true, but what you want to do, kind of like LeBron's doing with the all-time scoring record, you want to pad that lead. There you go. Because you don't know. Give Jay- me a little hey, extra. Jalen Williams is a young buck, and he's right behind SGA. There it is. Just saying. Okay, well, like, for the record, the record, the NBA record is 57. So mm-hmm. he's, like, still nine away from breaking James Harden's record. Um, there is somebody out there that... This is awesome. I think doesn't understand loyalty points. Uh-huh. There was a tweet that popped up this week that said, hey, to the person who currently holds 1,370,044 McDonald's loyalty points in the app, I don't know who you are, but I want you to know you're currently the top holder in the U.S. and you're the top points holder by a margin of 400K. So do you want to use some of these free points, please? Now, do we think this person thinks if he builds up enough points, he can use them to buy a McDonald's franchise? Straight up. I feel like he's getting close, though. You need a million dollars, right, to start a McDonald's. And if it's a one-to-one ratio, he's already there, okay? Everybody knows how credit card points work, all right? It's not a, it's not a direct one-to-one ratio, but I feel like McDonald's should, should hook this guy up. Yeah, th- these points are whack. Okay, so basically you get 100 That's... loyalty points for every dollar. So basically he's got $13,000 worth of McDonald's. So he is not close Golly. to Golly! Change 1,500 points for an ice cream cone, 3,000 points for a fry, or 6,000 for a Big Mac. Like, Okay, but if you're north of a million, you could eat like a king for... I mean, if you've bought that much McDonald's to get that many points, you could probably eat like a king for a good two weeks. <laughs> like, that's some bread. Yeah. He a could lot eat of all, bread. He could eat the three aforementioned things every day for 130 days in a row. Would you? To. Do, what? No. Like, would you eat free? Like, what, what fast food of choice would you eat every day if you had to? Oh, Chick-fil-A. Yeah. Or Zaxby's. I'm a Zaxby's girl Never living a in a non-Zaxby's world up here in Connecticut. Yeah, it's it's truly a bummer. I do hoard points. Nice. And then I because I forget about them. Okay. Then I realize and I'm like, oh, I'm cashing all these hoes in. Yeah, like on Amazon, right? One hundred percent. I got the Amex points. I'm like, I'm saving for a trip, and then I go to my Amazon cart, and it's like, you can use forty thousand points for this ninety dollar purchase, and I'm like, yeah, dude, Say for less. sure, saves me ninety bucks, and now I got free soap. <laughs> This was such an incredible headline to me. Just the headline speaks for itself. The rats are eating our marijuana. They're all high. Oh. This was a quote from the police superintendent in New Orleans who said that the rats have gotten into the marijuana stash. Rasta! How do you identify a high rat? I think they eat abnormally more than a standard rat. And also, do you think New Orleans has a marijuana problem or a rat problem <laughs> what is higher on the list of problems at this point if your rats are infiltrating the evidence locker <laughs> taking all of the evidence yeah. and doing with it what they want yeah they're defiantly like we the police can't stop us yeah i don't think there's a problem here at all i feel like it would make them more docile i gotta be honest dude i was in new york one time yeah, them, and you know how in new york if you've never been in new horses. york guys they just pile their trash on the street for mm. trash day. It's really gross. And one day, it's like trash day, and there's trash everywhere. And I see 
the biggest rat I'd ever seen. It's yes. like the size of a possum. Yes. And it is dead. Oh. Back up, legs in the air, dead in the trash. And I was like, how gross Somebody. is New York trash that a rat died from eating it? <laughs> Damn. That's bad. Damn, when you put it that way. Um, as an aside, you know, when people are like, hey, if the world ever comes to an end or if we find ourselves in an apocalyptic existence, but you still needed, you, you know, your, your daily public works, what are the most important? Doctors, police officers, you know, things like that. And I'm telling you right now, the number one most important public works that there is that exists is sanitation. Sure. If we didn't have sanitation, yeah. we'd be going to hell in a handbag. We would be just like those rats and dead in a dumpster. So thank your sanitation workers. Well, oh. your applause. Thank you, sanitation workers. Thank you. you literally do the dirty work. That's right. And you get paid handsomely for it. You know, a sanitation worker in New York City, they start north of $100,000. Yeah, a year. they make good money. And as they, they deserve it's it. It's gross. Yeah, yeah. It's not great. It's gross. Touch this rats. This is also not great for everybody that thought, I'm going to go to the Penguins game oh, because it's I'm Yarmer getting Yager this night. limited edition bobblehead. Get this Yammer Yager bobblehead. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, it had to be canceled because the truck that was carrying all of the bobbleheads was stolen. That's crazy. So this is a skilled criminal because this thing, you probably need your CDL, all right, to steal the truck that these bobbleheads were in. This is like a big rig. This is an 18-wheeler. This ain't just no pickup truck. So does Pittsburgh have more of an auto theft problem or does New York have more, or rather New Orleans have more of a rat problem? I don't know, but I'm a pissed off Penguins fan if I just wanted that bobblehead. I'm just wondering, like, once you discover that you've got all these bobbleheads, like, what, are you going to the secondary bobblehead market and selling them? Are you going to pop up to Pawn Stars and be like, just asking for a friend, what just, might could you do with 22,000 Yarmer Yager bobbleheads? Like, um, sir, you're arrested. What proof do you have? Well, the semi-trailer that you have in your yard with 22,000 bobblehead listings on your eBay page. Yeah. That gave it away. <laughs> they, they probably can't make those money. They have to spread it out over some a course of time. Yeah. But I love, by the way, that you mentioned the eBay reference. People don't know that eBay still exists. You can still get some great things on what? it. And while it still exists, just a little program alert, we've started a TikTok for the L. Duncan Show. So if that's a thing that you do, if you're a TikTok follower of Gary's, come on over. Follow us on TikTok as on. well. It ain't going anywhere. It's going nowhere. Don't no. get scared. Same like this show, going nowhere fast. When we close things out yeah, on the other that. side, we'll show you why some of our coworkers clutch their pearls at Adam Schefter. And I just went, yeah, no, I can relate. That's coming up. All right, so because of NFL free agency, Adam Oof. Schefter working day and day and day and night. And he accumulated over 17 hours of screen day Every day. That feels really high. He did almost 15 hours on one phone, two and a half hours on the other. Now, again, this Jeff man. Got the burner. Right. He is literally fielding so many calls from so many people all the time, whatever. So that does feel high, and it is a little bit. But then I looked at like what my screen time was. My, really? I have no discernible reason to have a high time. My average this week right now is nine hours. Ooh. And that's an average because yesterday it was 12 hours. I don't even know how I'm on my phone that long. Okay, so my question to these analytics is, does it count screen time as like if you just have Spotify running, right? Or if you have just ah. any app running? Because you and Omar are listening to music every waking minute there. in your house and streaming it. Oh, see, it now I'm getting like a little bit more into it. Yes, when your apps are open, okay. like messages, it says it's been open for two. Actually, it just says I'm looking okay. at messages. Because I was about to call CPS like, hey, this mom, she's great, but she ain't paying no attention to her, her kids. Her children. Unless you consider her phone a child because she's given that child 10 hours of undivided attention every day <laughs> and she's sleeping for eight of them. What's yours? Actually, lower than I thought. Five. Five hours and 43 oh, minutes. Oh, you're so present. Five hours and 43 minutes. You are a that's present legit. man. That's what I'm saying. How many notifications do you get a day, daily average? You got to scroll down. Um, I don't this see is, where that is. This is texts. This is texts. Communication. Downtime. Yeah, look. App limits. You go to, right, your week. Okay. So click into the. See all app and what, yeah, okay. Okay, and then just you click into see all app. And oh, notifications. Well, it's in the red, so that can't be good. Daily um, average texts, 303. Oh, wow. Mine's 157. I don't have it's as many too friends. Much. It's OD. Yeah. It's OD. Yeah. 
I hate it. You've got to really pull back from people. You've got to retreat. You've got to do a better job of that. Yeah. Just my be on your phone all day. My phone's always on do not disturb, but I continue to be disturbed. Damn. These are like lies you tell yourself. I just came back from a naturopath, which is like a person that, you know, just like treats whatever's going on with you with vitamins, make sure that you're feeling healthy and stuff like that. Yeah. I had told myself my whole there? life. No. Okay, that's totally different. You ayahuasca? They don't give us mushrooms. It's actual vitamins, not herbs. Just a journalist asking questions. Uh-huh. So I go, and I've been telling myself my whole entire life that I have slow metabolism. I'm like, yeah. listen, you know, it's okay. Embrace your curves. You work hard. You eat clean. You work out. This is just your body because your metabolism's slow. She pricked my finger. She looked at it. She was like... How about that metabolism? I go, I know, it's like slow. She's like, no, it's not. I'm like, yes, it is. She's like, no, I'm looking at your metabolism. You, you have very fast metabolism. I wanted to call her a bitch. I wanted to cuss her out. I was like, no, don't tell me that. Because Damn. I've told myself this lie for 30 years that my metabolism is slow, and that's why I look this way, and now you're telling me there's no excuse for why I look this way and I don't like it. <laughs> so I don't want to know. Okay, like Mario Winans. Keep it on the low. I don't want to know. Can you believe it? She determined that you had a fast metabolism by simply pricking your finger. Yeah, they look at your blood, dude. That's did you go, it works. Did you go, sounds like a witch. Okay. She just looked at your blood? Yes. Uh-huh. Yep. I, I, did she spin it? She did. She spun it and she... Got it. That got does it, it for the it. L. Duncan Show. Hey, on Monday, we will be joined by Jay Billis. Oh, we better clean it up. Hours post-selection show. Make sure to watch that on Sunday as well, 8 o'clock Eastern on ESPN. We'll see you on Monday. And tell everybody about the podcast, about the show. And about L's slow metabolism. Don't say that. Just, oh, no. okay. Fast. Fast metabolism. <laughs> Very disappointing. Damn. Oh, so they sent it to a lab.